Hi and uh, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. It's Derek Watson here, the Angry Dentist. It's the 23rd of March. Actually, it's not. It's the 22nd, but this is going to be released on the 23rd. Uh, we've just got the NASDAQ annual survey of uh, how the how the profession's doing financially. So uh, I thought I'd share that with you as they've shared it with us. Um, they meet uh, once a year. Let me uh, show you the guys who uh, do the job. This is the this is the people. Um, I think the top the caption is correct. I think for the top one, but I think for the bottom one it's a little bit misleading. Well, I mean it says that Peter Ward is in there, and and I think he is in there. Uh, let me just have a quick close up look at that. Yeah, I mean that's uh, Alan Suggett on the left, and then. Uh, the guy who's leaning back, I'm not sure who that is. And then there's old Michael Watson who invented the UDA. No relation. Next to him, moving right, Professor Stephen Tidman, the only economist in the village. And uh, that's a bearded Peter Ward, who looks like he's put on, he's, he take, he's lost weight around his belly and put on weight on his chin. I didn't recognise him at first, actually. I thought that might be Eddie Crouch with the beard. But anyway, there he is, sitting there. Uh, Sitting in, <laughs> they're in the BDA, <laughs> and he's in, and he's in uh, the chief executive, and uh, and he's not, he's sort of just sitting with the rest of them. So anyway, that's fine, that's fine, that's who they are. So let's get started. Um, the data is here, and I've changed it. For some reason, it wouldn't record a PowerPoint, so I've changed it into a PDF. Anyway. Um, uh, these uh, NASDAQ is, a, is an association of uh, specialist dental accountants and lawyers. It started off as accountants, and then then it worked so well that they sort of the lawyers wanted to get in on the action, um, and it works by by specialising, obviously, includes in the title, um, but um, you know which means that basically they know things about dentists that your average accountant and lawyer possibly wouldn't know. And of course, vastly aided by the Department of Health, making everything so complicated that you need a specialist accountant and a lawyer to, to just uh, navigate. So, um, Alan Suggett, he's my accountant, highly recommend him. And he presented the Goodwill survey. I'm not gonna go through this in the sort of detail he would have done. I'll just skip through it. And let's see if we can sort of pick, pick the bit of the meat off the bones. Um, this is always an important graph uh, because it shows goodwill as a percentage of fee income. In other words, what, how much premium is being paid for the fact that the the practice is a going concern. And uh, you can see that it sort of trundled along. The blue line is the one you're interested in. It sort of trundled along at uh, anywhere between 100 and 120%, so 125%. The uh, valuation goodwill always makes me laugh because the I don't know how they fix that. It doesn't seem to be related to the actual deals. Uh, it just seems to be like how optimistic they are that year. But in October they went up to 160% of valuation but then of course when the actual deal went through it went down to 120 so um, that's a good give you a, this is a good you know when you're doing an impairment review at the end of your financial year um, and you want to put down a value for goodwill then if you put down 110% of 115 percent of turnover then you probably won't go far wrong so um, but these you know this is a bit, quite a small sample because we're only talking about the practices that have been sold or bought in that year and there aren't that many surgeries change hands in any particular year uh, probably a couple of hundred and as you can see from the range they they range you know for NHS goodwill ranges from 53 to 300 um, private ranges from 63 to 155 a lot really depends on what practice you know is it is there a bidding war over it or is it um, is somewhere where you know it's it, it, perhaps there shouldn't be a practice even so um, let's just skip on these the so we're going to the dental statistics it's based on the uh, all the accounts that have got year ends up to 5th of April 2016 so basically it's everybody who's year ended between the 5th of April 2015 and 5th of April 2016 and as we are now coming up to 5th of April 2017 uh, that means that the most recent set of accounts included in here is nearly a year out of date and the oldest one is nearly two years out of date 
so uh, you know just bear in mind that we are looking back 18 months on average they represent 27 percent of uh, the, all the self-employed dentists and probably quite a few of the ones that are trading as limited companies so uh, this is quite a large sample size uh, 600 practices 600 associates and the way they define wholly national health service is greater than 80 percent national health service same with private if you're more than 80 percent private then they call you private if you're somewhere between 80 percent private and national health service then um, you're mixed and that's based on your fees not on the number of patients so for example you could be you could have like you could be 95 percent NHS by number of patients but uh, still be called uh, mixed because you like your private fees might be 20 percent or 25 percent of your income so um, average total fee income per dentist uh, you've got the last three years there uh, a lot of this data is not really I would say it's not really um, indicative of anything I mean a lot of it's been static so for example there you've got March 2014 for NHS is 180 then it goes 184 then it goes down to 178 so it's pretty well ended up where it started from so there's no trend there there's certainly no upward trend I mean the fact that there is no upward trend is news in itself I mean what, what they're saying is that um, NHS total fee income per dentist hasn't increased since before 2014 um, private private practice uh, total fee income 248 240 245 um, still greater per dentist but then obviously the thing is you then have to take into account the expenses so now we're starting to look at the net profit yeah so net profit this is not NHS versus private now this is all practices so this is just to be a, a practice owner the average practice owner so it's comparing really whether um, if you're single-handed or if you've got associates whether you're doing better or worse than the average dentist and here we've got the the net profit really again static 129 in March 131 March this year um, single-handed practitioners this was the big story from their point of view uh, the average net which is you know so, you know, this was worrying for me because my profit is um, I, I'm a single-handed practitioner well I'm, I'm not really I suppose I've got a hygienist and an implantologist working here so uh, so I'm not but I mean single-handed average net profit 119 110 105 not good is it going down probably 15% uh, or 10 15 percent reduction over three years and then if you've got associates you're actually doing slightly better than the average practice so um, I think the message is work with associates if you can here we are going we are doing a straightforward comparison between NHS and private and this is um, this is once you've earned your fees your gross fee income and taken off your expenses so you can see that the the larger um, gross fee income that the private practitioners get is pretty well completely lost in the um, you know by the time you get to the net this, and this is turnover this is take home before tax rather this is your this is your pre this is your taxable take home pay um, so again the myth that private dentists earn a lot more than national health service dentists is, is not true in fact this year we've earned less last year we earned more the year before that we earned about the same um, and that's because you know we, we're spending far more on materials on equipment etc etc and time you know we're just seeing fewer patients so um, I know what you know, at the end of the day what's the point of going private the answer is you know you, you just have the quality of life issue isn't it really it's just if you want to use nice if you want to have nice things <laughs> go private <laughs> if you want to make the same money and then run yourself ragged and and end up complaining to everybody what the shit life you've got <laughs> go on the NHS um, fee income this is for an NHS practice so per principle if you're on the if you're on the NHS I mean to me these are staggering figures I mean staggering considering that what a UDA is about 25 pounds how they can say that an NHS principal in 2016 is supposed to gross 427,000 pounds earning 25 pounds a checkup is just staggering you know or, or uh, 12 25 300 pound for a course of treatment that includes absolutely everything it's uh, just incredible, but apparently we do.
and uh, if you're an NHS practitioner and you are grossing £427,000 on the NHS first of all um, you know I can I can understand why you go along to a postgraduate meeting and say you know well I, I'm doing okay on the NHS uh, if I was grossing £427,000 <laughs> privately I'd be I'd be quite happy but uh, uh, and the other thing is, um, you know, perhaps you'd like to tell us how you do it. Well, I'll repeat my standing challenge to anyone working on the NHS to allow me in the practice for a day just to see what they get up to. But unfortunately, in the last 10 years, no one's taken me up on it. Um, materials are sort of been a constant. Wages have is, is pretty well, is pretty increased, isn't it? 191,000 there. Other expenses have shot up. I would imagine that's probably things like Care Quality Commission compliance and stuff like that, vacuum autoclaves. Um, but having said that, your net profit's up. So um, because, and this is because they've put th sort of nearly 40,000 on the top line and not so much on the on the, uh, on the the expenses, um, the net profit's up from 129 to 134. So although as a percentage it's down, you can see there they're taking, you know, they're taking more in, ho in, in terms of pounds, they're taking more pounds home but they're having to earn far more in fee income to do that. Practice uh, private fee income, well, 374, 405, 386. Again, we're in a downturn, aren't we? 2015, 2016, we're going back into another sort of mini depression, I think. Not that we ever really covered from the 2008 depression. Um, materials and lab fees, wages and indirect costs. Well, oh, they're more expensive, aren't they? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, well, no, 180, 191. Oh, and we, we spend less on wages. No, that's interesting. And that I presume because we're seeing fewer patients and so the whole place is not so hectic. Um, but the net profit is slightly higher, isn't it? Let's go back to the NHS figures. Um, oh no, hang on, sorry. There we are. So that's the NHS price. So 31.4% uh, and then we are, uh, we're taking home about 346 so key expense ratios these are the things that you want to look at in your accounts and find out whether you are on on track with this materials should be about 13 percent this is across the board wages should be about 40 percent other expenses should be about 13 percent and your expenses as a whole should be 67 68 percent personally i think that's outrageous i mean expect that level of expenses as a as a percentage of your total fee income i mean i can i can't ever remember it being that high it must have been creeping up because I, I seem to remember it was around about 50%. Um, so you know, but so that I think is is shocking. That basically what that means is out of every sort of um, 300 pounds you earn, 200 pounds of it goes out in expenses, which is you know, and some of these practices are pretty lean and mean. If you're if you have got uh, associates, then let's have a look. Then they are not earning much are they in the way of fees and not and, and earning even less in the way of profit you, they're bringing you in 82 and they've got to take home 67 so it's 15,000 pounds a year you're getting for the a pleasure of um, having to deal with all the problems that associate might cause but they apparently they don't cause so many problems that um, people don't uh, don't want them but I think that this you know that extra 15,000 it adds a lot onto the fees and it adds a lot onto the profit which makes mixed practices look good but you know, basically, at the end of the day, that's all you're getting out of it is another 15 grand. So, uh, UDA rates have gone up a bit. They are now 27 pounds on average, of which the associate gets about 40 percent by the look of it, 30, 40 percent. If you've got a calculator, you can work out what uh, what 1090 divided by 27 is, but it seems to me to be not much. It's going to be, it's going to struggle to get around 40 percent, isn't it? Um, and I don't know what that's whether that's changed over the years. You can do the math. Um, Fifty-three percent of practices are sole traders. For eighteen percent are partnerships. Twenty-nine percent are sole companies. That again, no change. Limited companies, rather, no change there. We trade as a limited company, and uh, I've yet to find out what my tax bill is going to be. So I'll let you know whether it's worth it. But I think it's worth it. Um, Associates almost certainly trade as sole traders. That's because, um, as a limited company, I don't think they're eligible to join the NHS superannuation scheme. So they really have to sort of give up their NHS pension if they want to trade as a limited company. 
so that if you're one of the two percent of the associates that's trading as a limited company you hope you've got a, a jolly good reason for that slight increase in fee income well really moderate increase in overheads yeah far bigger reduction in profit um, that was uh, that's the market as a whole for NHS practices quite a decent increase in fee income um, a new contract rumoured next year be interesting to see what happens normally in the first year of a new contract actually NHS fees tend to go up because uh, for two reasons first of all uh, they want dentists to want to go into the contract so they tend to make sort of sweeten the pill a bit for the first year and then and secondly dentists find all the loopholes in the first year <laughs> so can't so they have a year of sort of bleeding cash um, and then after that uh, they close the loopholes and dentists more dentists get fed up and leave increase in direct costs and overheads and a recovery and profitability so there you are so you've had nine percent more to get four percent more profit in private practices, well, the fee income's going down. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure that figure's right, but I can't... I don't see why. I think there's probably... I think they, what they said was that there's some um, resistance amongst private dentists to put their fees up, to, you know, because inflation we know now is just jumped up to 2.3%, and, you know, if you're charging £1,000 for something, you then you should be charging... Uh, well, thousand plus two percent. Had about fifty quid on your fee, twenty, thirty, forty quid on the fee, and, and private. You know, we don't like to change our fees, do we? Once they're stuck. Talking of which, we're doing the annual um, private fee survey at the moment. So, what I might do is just cut in a quick link to the um, uh, the the uh, website. But if you go, you you should have had a um, an email from the, the fusion just asking you to fill in the online survey. I don't know how many people have done it but um, perhaps I'll do a, a little um, presentation on that uh, next time I'm online. So I think yeah reluctance to put the fees up but it's not necessarily because, de it's certainly not because private dentists are going back on the NHS uh, and I don't think it's necessarily because there's fewer patients around although there may be there fewer pi private patients around so perhaps the, the, the old um, appointment book's not so full up. Anyway, a 10% reduction in fee income translates to a 10% reduction in profit, and then at the end of the day, you earn the same as um, NHS, but you just don't get the white hairs. Associates, uh, everything pretty static, apart from they're getting they're getting further and further screwed, aren't they? Because they have no power. You see, they have no negotiating power. They have no negotiating power with the government. They have no negotiating power in the market. So um, really, it's kind of, it's very bleak, and they're in surplus. Uh, there's more associates than required. So. Um, they're, they're very bleak as an associate. I, I feel sorry for the dentists who qualify because they're going to come out as associates and try and find jobs. And I suppose you know when you've been a student, uh, even the sort of money they're earning is sixty grand a year is is not a bad screw. But having said that, I mean, what they're asked to do for it is, I think, is quite challenging. There we go, and that's the uh, standard uh, blah 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 blah. Don't unless Nasdaq's actually sent you this information. Please do not give it away is their proprietary information um, and if you want to um, see them then they are on the web at nasdal.co.uk as I say I do I do recommend them they do a fixed uh, fee sort of uh, package so it's not like you know you pay the accountant and then he sends you a big long list of the queries and you think oh yeah you're just trying to bump your fee your fees up or um, you don't, you know, you don't feel like oh, I can't ask them anything because it's going to cost me fifty quid just to ask this question, stupid question. Um, it's all you ask them; they'll do your fixed fee package, and uh, it's not massively expensive. And in return for that, they'll do everything and they answer every question. So uh, again, give them a bit of love. All right, lovely. That's everything from me. So any questions at all, then go to the um, well. You can email me at Derek Derek at dentalfusion.org, or um, Otherwise, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.